So the, the premise of the new BBC One series, Life Story, is probably the greatest story that you can tell in biology or in natural history, which is the story of all, that all animals take across a lifetime. The sort of biological imperative of all creatures actually is to generate, produce offspring, the next generation. And so that journey from the moment you're born to the moment you achieve that is what life story is about. But actually, it's rather like the kind of seven ages of man in Shakespeare, but actually we only do six, that each stage of that life is a critical moment, a critical time. So when you're born, when you grow up, when you uh, make a home, or when you try and find your place in society, or when you try and find a mate, or when you finally have your own offspring, each of those is a, is a kind of discrete challenge, a discrete um, rite of passage that you have to pass through to get to the next stage. So what we've done is each of those life st stages is an episode and each of those takes that tells that story and it lovely it, so it beautifully connects. So you, you, you do the first episode and you survive that and then you get to the second episode and the third and the fourth and then you finally get to the sixth episode and hopefully you've made your biological destiny and you have offspring. Whenever we try and do one of these big blockbuster series. We're always trying to find something new that's going to make it different and move on from the previous series. And you know, that's the same challenge you know, we've, we've faced that on this series. And I think there's a number of things that have made, make, will make it stand out. One, I think techn technologically, I think we've shot this in ultra high definition. And I think this is the first series that's been done like that. And that I think has quite a significant um, effect on the audience. They will see just more detailed, more, in, more engaging, more powerful pictures, just simply from an aesthetic perspective. Like when we did our first HD shows, days, you know, suddenly it was like drawing the veil back. My gosh, I can see stuff that I've never seen before. We'll get that. But also, shooting in, in ultra high definition has also really helped us with the editorial of the, of the series, because this series is all about individual struggles, about individual challenges, and about that individual journey across the life story. And you want to be able to see that in the faces and in the in the reactions and in the and in the you know the expressions if you like of the animals and so what ultra high definition does is really brings that to life it's so vivid it's so intense and also just being able to show the behavior in such a detailed and intense way i think has really helped secondly i think the storytelling because this is such a perfect natural story it is it is like uh, as i said before or i've said you know said to many people it is a bit like shakespeare's seven ages of man you know we do follow each life stage and that is a great story which people can connect to we make that same journey ourselves and, and I think the third thing is the way we filmed it we've, we've tried to really get the audience in those animals lives so we, the camera is down with them so of course sometimes we have to be distant and observe but whenever we can we try to get the camera kind of off the tripod in amongst the animals either using moving camera or handheld or just in their perspective. So not quite point of view, but on their shoulder, in their world. So I guess it's more like a comparison would be, you know, filming a boxing fight from the, the rafters on a telephoto lens, or actually being in the boxing ring with them, filming it. That's, you know, that's the, the attempt, that's the sort of sense we're trying to get. And I think you combine those three things together, and it feels, you know, it feels another evolution of the, um, of the, uh, of the natural history blockbuster genre, if you like. One of, the other, one of the other things I think was important in what makes this series different is that uh, because it's a serial as well as a series, as so each episode follows the other, um, it was important and fun to have characters that, animal characters that reappear. So in an episode, sometimes you find an animal A doing something in its life, at sequence three, and then you come back and see how that resolves in sequence six. And that's quite unusual. We have not really done that before. Occasionally, we've had animals that appear in episode one twice and then maybe appear in episode two or three to see them further down their lives. And I, and I think that that has kind of um, resonance of drama serials. And you know, these are not dramas. These are, you know, this is factual, but there is an element of that, some of that drama, dramatic storytelling has, we tried to be inspired by that. When you try and make one of these big, la big landmark series, you know there are, I think I think there are a number of factors you try and you try and hit. You know you want drama, you want spectacle, you want surprise, you want a bit of humour, a bit of you know a, a bit of um, crowd pleasing stuff. But I think it, whenever you can, if you have the opportunity to really tell stories that connect to an audience in a way that perhaps awe and splendor don't always do that. You know, if you if you see a glorious image, that's a fantastic experience. It's a great it's a great emotion. 
but I think there are other emotions and being able to, to, to actually get the, get the audience to follow and be with you in that story I think is, is very important and we've, we've really pushed that quite hard on this on, on life story and that's both taking the, the animals perspective trying to get inside their world and trying to almost share the kind of challenges that they're trying to deal with which I think is important and how you how we um, reflect that in the way it's made is partly in how it's captured, partly how it's shot, getting the camera down in the, amongst their world on their eye and that sort of thing, but also how it's edited. You know, we've, the stories are absolutely as we observe them, but what we've done is as we've edited them, we've tried to think as how these stories would be told in a slightly more um, cinematic way. So it's it, without, without, I hope, stepping over any kind of unacceptable line of over-anthropomorphism, although I don't have much to, I have personally, I think people get the get themselves a bit over worried about anthropomorphism. I think it's quite an old fashioned view. Um, but you know, being careful to, to, to stay within acceptable boundaries. We, we you know we've definitely tried to tell the stories both visually and narratively um, in a way that feels cinematic and feels storytelling rather than just observation. Well, of course, a team on a project like this is absolutely critical, and you know everybody thinks they've got the best team. We have the best team. I think it was you know what I liked about this team was that, and that just not just the production team, that's the camera team as well, and the, and the sound team. Every, everybody kind of bought the concept, bought the idea, bought the approach, and that doesn't always happen. You know, you sometimes you know you one tries to do something and not everybody kind of either gets it or wants to get you know. That. So, but anyway, they're definitely the case here. We've really got that. And I think it shows dividends because there's a consistency of approach, there's a consistency of ethos, there's a consistency of style, photographic style, consistency of storytelling style. And, and you know, interesting, David Attenborough noticed it as well. He said, I think this really feels like a, um, you know, a really strong piece across the whole, the whole series. And I think that also is important because it is a surreal as well as a series, you know, each episode does build on the other, on the, on the previous one, and I think that's unusual in what we in what we normally do. You know, they often a wildlife series is kind of little volumes of stuff. You know, you find about X or Y or Z, and you can take it or leave it. I'm not interested in X. I won't watch that. I'm, not, I'm interested in Y. But this, you know, if you watch episode one, you kind of want to know what's going to happen in episode two because you found out the story that's from episode one. So I think there's, a, you know, there's some there's some kind of inspiration and learning from how serials and dramatic drama serials work which I think helps I'm the, t the team on this project was amazing and it, of course absolutely critical were the editors the, the film editors the picture editors and um, we've we've used a variety of editors actually some that we've used a lot in the past and a couple that or one that we haven't used very much actually as uh, somebody bring in a bit of you know, slightly different approach or different some fresh blood um, they absolutely bought the principle, the concept, the idea of this series in a way that I think was really rewarding. You know, because without those, without the, you know, in some ways they're the kind of the last link in the chain. And if they don't, if they don't buy it, all the other work just comes to nothing. And, and I was really pleased with, you know, those those edits. They were really fantastic. And you know, for example, um, one of the one of the editors working on one of the chimpanzee sequences. You know, there is an enormous amount of footage. This is true of all the of all the of all the. You know, we shoot a lot, and so there's an enormous amount of effort to look, you know, go through the Of course, the producer's doing that as well, but the editor in the end is the person who's going to pick those little moments. And uh, Angela, who worked on on the on this wonderful chimp story we've been filming over, over a couple of episodes. I mean, she absolutely meticulously scoured and rescoured those rushes to looking for those right moments where they you know, because often the stuff is shot in slightly disjointed way and she was searching for that right well that's you know these individuals were following very intense individual stories that individual there is that individual there and I've got to make sure that he's now that's the one that turns at that point yeah and of course and he's responding to that one isn't he and then gets in the producer or the, the ex the person who shot that Emma and said now I'm, I am right am I that is Dawson isn't it and we don't name them in the shows but the scientists would definitely tell you if you got it wrong and to be that precise and to be that craft that, that amount of craft was was outstanding and it shows in the shows music of course is a critical part of, of all these projects and I think on Life Story again we took a a rather different uh, approach or a, a departure from normal. We used a musician that we haven't used in our history films before, and Rupert Barrington, the series producer, um, spent a lot of time thinking about who would be the right person. He had this, I think, inspired idea to use Murray Gold, who's the, actually famous for doing the Doctor Who music. 
And what we liked about his music, many things we liked about his music, but one of the things he was, we really liked about it was there was, a, there was one scene in Doctor Who where effectively Doctor Who, the Doctor Who kind of dies and goes off into the time warp and then is replaced by a new Doctor Who. And that's quite a moving moment. And we watched, the, we watched that sequence and the music was both poignant but absolutely amazingly uplifting. And we thought that's a, that's a hard thing to... That's a hard thing to pull off. And he did that in a way that I think is remarkable. So yeah, Murray's music is, is amazing. And when you finish a series like this, there's always a moment of kind of reflection about what, you know, what have we as a team achieved. And I think the team generally would say they feel very proud that you know, we have pushed the boundaries again, I think. Um, we've, uh, We've shown, you, we've shown you amazing things in the natural world. I think we've shown it in a new way. Um, I'm personally very proud of the fact that I think people will find this a very intense experience. I think it feels like natural history for the next decade. I think it's setting a, a, a stand. Not everybody will do this, but I think it, you know, I personally think the reaction we've had so far is this are very intense experiences. Um, that may be too much. I and mean, it'd be really interesting to see whether people find the, um, the storytelling just too big, too not big isn't the right word, too intense. Because we don't we don't often step back and just let the dust settle and cut to a you know go to a you know wonderful landscape or anything like that. We just made that conscious decision. Um, and also of course I, I I'm I'm proud that the the team have not only delivered a phenomenal series but all got back safe and sound and you know all round to go to produce the next one, which many of them are going to join, join Rupert and me on. So after Life Story, um, a number of us on the Life Story team are going to embark on our next series, uh, Dynasty, which um, is taking some of the thinking behind Life Story to the next stage in the way that Life Story is across, that tells the story of of lives, but takes lots and lots of different examples from all sorts of animals at any one time, at any one moment. What Dynasty does is say every animal, of course, is on that journey. Some are, have a particular strategy, which is to kind of dominate the landscape. Because if you if you dominate your land, if you dominate your group, then all the spoils of the life story come to you. You get the best mates, you get the best resources, and you have most of your genes in the next generation. So that's the biological underpinning. But dramatically speaking, and storytelling speaking, you know, there are, amongst some of the social animals, these great, intense, Lion King-esque stories, which I think are just now ready to be told, using the techniques and the approach we've learned on Life Story.